you very much for coming along. Let me first of all start by saying hi. I run my own company, Lightbulb Moment, and what we do is we focus on the skills and the experience that you need to be a virtual trainer. So we focus on webinars, virtual classrooms, and that kind of area, as well as the whole digital learning landscape and putting that into strategy. We can see that lots of people are doing um, marketing for business to business, they're using it for sales, and they're making conversions into sales as well. She says pausing so that you can take your photos, I can see. And I do have this information as a download as well, so you can get access to this a little bit later. And half of those leaders say, well actually we, do, we don't even know what the potential is of this technology. We've, we've kind of know about it, it's kind of over there, but we don't know the potential of actually implementing that in our organisation. And this is why I do the kind of thing I do, it's to try and up those numbers. That's kind of one of my aims, is to try and get people more skilled around this. What you have to make sure you focus on is what the business need is the business driver because whatever solution you put in any kind of learning solution training solution performance support technology whatever you work on in business obviously you should have a, a need for the business because you're putting time and effort and money into it whether that's physically paying for a platform or for a service or to outsource something or even just is it a day or a week or a month that you're spending on something there is a business cost to that so one of the things that people often ask me is which webinar software should I use which platform is it Adobe Connect is it Webex is it something else like a go to I think somebody mentioned earlier on all sorts of different platforms and the thing is with the platform, I can't tell you, you need WebEx or you need Adobe Connect or actually you need GoToMeeting because it's about what you want to do with it. That's it's the right tool for the job. That's always a really important point. You also have to think about, well, how are people actually going to consume that information? Of the people that register, 65% might come along for just the live session. Some will, uh, about 30% look at the on-demand part of it, they watch the recording later. So if that's the case, if you know probably that's how it's going to work for your company, you need to make sure you've got a way of doing that. What I want to turn to now is having a look at the structure we should open our webinar with. I'm sorry, this isn't really rocket science, this is probably going to be obvious to most of you, but it's about taking what we do and putting it online, which can feel quite different. The biggest difference between what we are doing right here, right now, and doing it online, is the technology. That's kind of the barrier that's in the way. And we don't want it to be a barrier. Quite often I hear people on webinars or virtual classrooms say, well, what do you think of that? I don't know, like green tick, or in, in the chat, or do you want me to unmute? Uh, do you, webcam, you know, what, what do you want me to do? So we have to plan our questions and interactions really well. And deconstructing what we normally do face to face. So maybe say something, a green tick if you agree with me. It's a closed question, but it's a start. And then go right, well in the chat window, if you do agree, what's your experience? Type, type, type. Oh, Bob, that's a great point. Bob, unmute, tell us more. And if you like what Bob said, give him a round of applause icon. So it is different. You have to approach it differently, but it's just deconstructing what you normally do face to face and then building it again in the technology, and I promise you, you can do that. We talked about you have to know what you want to do with your webinar or your live online learning. So whether it's sales, marketing, whether it's information dissemination or learning, there's platforms approach it. So you just need to make sure you know which one, or multiple, that you're doing in order to choose the right platform and so on. 